Hi, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday of this 28th week of Ordinary Time. And today's the feast of one of the heavyweights, Teresa of Avila. She, one of the great masters of the spiritual life, doctor of the church, uh, reformed the Carmelites in the 1500s, wrote books like her, her autobiography. There's a book that Edith Stein read that completely changed her life. Sister Saint Benedicta of the Cross, Teresa Benedicta of the Cross, named herself after St. Teresa, and also uh, Interior Castles, which is the book I read over and over again to try to make sense of my own life and the spiritual life. But and I read the autobiography too, but but didn't touch me like it did Teresa Benedicta of the Cross. But um, anyway, a real heavyweight. So let's begin through inter her intercession. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let's ask God for his mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to new life, Lord have mercy. You call us to new life right now, Christ have mercy. You call us to serve the kingdom, Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the lasting life. Let us pray. O God, who through your spirit raised up St. Teresa of Jesus to show the church the way to seek perfection, Grant that we may always be nourished by the food of her heavenly teaching and fired with longing for true holiness. There you go. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now, the works of the flesh are obvious. Immorality, impurity, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outbursts of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking bouts, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. Now, those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified their flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also follow the Spirit. The word of the Lord. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. He is like a tree down by a street. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked. She is like a tree down by the street. Blessed the man who follows not the counsel of the wicked, nor walks in the way of sinners, nor sits in the company of the insolent, but delights in the law of the Lord, 
and meditates on his law day and night. like a tree planted near running water that yields its fruit in due season and whose leaves never fade. Whatever he does prospers. Not so the wicked, not so. They are like chaff which the wind drives away. For the Lord watches over the way of the just, but the way of the wicked vanishes. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. After Jesus had, had spoken, a Pharisee invited him to dine at his house. He entered and reclined at table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washings before the meal. The Lord said to him, O you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of cup and dish, Inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools, do not the maker of the outside also make the inside? But as to what is given, and what is within, give alms, and behold, everything will be made clean for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, the age-old struggle with religion. This idea of external observance of our spiritual lives, is it important for these externals? And I'm going to say, yes, it is. But what relationship do the externals have with our internal transformation? An external might be watching this, for example, you know, me talking to you and us going back and forth with this. Let me quote from Ruth Burroughs, one of my mentors here, about all this. In her book called To Believe in Jesus, the chapter on the pain of being human, she writes this. If we were to consult some of the older manuals dealing with the ascetical life, that is, how we must work in order to overcome our bad habits and acquire virtue, we are probably given a list of virtues, show how the Lord himself practiced them in his mortal life, and counsel, and counsel on how we must imitate him. Like, likewise, we'll be given a system of prayer, rules for organizing our lives and governing our conduct. A program would be set before us, which we could follow quite meticulously, ticking off one point after another. The great defect, here's the important part, the great defect of such an approach is that it concentrates on self-perfection. All the attention is on the self. We glance at our Lord and imitate him only in order to perfect our behavior 
and shine before him. It is possible. Here's the last sentence. It is possible to build a splendid structure of spirituality that has nothing to do with God and his life in us. And the approach I have mentioned easily fosters all of this. Boom. What do you think about that one? Right kind of between the eyes. Now, I would say that's how I was taught right there a long time ago. Emphasis on self-perfection. Emphasis on myself being good. My big criticism of all that is you are trying to earn your own salvation. It's all centered around yourself. And who cares about anybody else? It's centered on the ego. Whatever happened to loving God and loving our neighbor, as opposed to being so concerned about ourselves. Now, this, as Jesus is saying to us, was the fundamental problem of the Pharisees. They observed the law, the rituals, and they had a lot of them, a ton of them, of these externals, and filled with plunder deep inside. Here's a question for all of us, and I'll pick on myself, because I think uh, I need to do that anyway. Okay, now, priests, I, I do a lot of stuff, folks. I, I'm in church every day, every morning. I pray the liturgy of the hours. I read. I study. I pray. I say the rosary. I say two rosaries a day. I'm not bagging at all. I say two rosaries. This is what God's given to me. And here's my question. Why aren't I better? Given all of that, why aren't I better? Why aren't I more Christ-like in my life? Externals, I got many of them. I do all kinds of different things, but am I really seeking God in my life? Am I seeking intimacy with God, seeking transformation, seeking to become more and more like Jesus? Am I thinking about that as I do my externals, or am I ticking them off because somehow, look at all the great things I'm doing, puffing myself up and, and thinking I'm getting, you know, earning my way into heaven in some fashion, which we cannot do. All of us, I mean, you're watching me here today. We go to Mass, stand, kneel, pray, liturgy of the Word, externals. Do we connect the externals with internal transformation in our lives? There's something for us to ponder, I think, today. Here's my question, kind of an interesting one. If you, inv if you invited Jesus to your house for dinner, like the person in the Gospel today, what disparity between your actions and attitude, your, what the spirit between your actions and your attitude would Jesus chide you for? Like you, you're doing all these things, and but have you been changed? Does that make sense? Where do I need to be transformed internally in order to become more and more like Jesus? Not so much worry about my own self-perfection or puff myself up, but being more and more like Jesus. Does that make sense for you? Just something for us to ponder. The big question between the big, the big, yeah, a question, I guess.